Yeah, these are very exciting times for Waldenstrom's and uh, really what we're seeing is progress being made because of the results from genomic sequencing. The identification of the MYD88 mutation led to the development of BTK inhibitors. We've seen now um, a lot of really exciting uh, data coming out from multiple different trials, trials that have looked at ibrutinib, uh, even in randomized uh, studies, um, looking at ibrutinib and rituxan uh, versus rituxan, a community standard. We've seen uh, phase two trials with acalabrutinib as well as zanubrutinib, and more importantly, we're also seeing a head-to-head -head, uh, trial of zanubrutinib, a new BTK inhibitor uh, versus ibrutinib. So this is all telling us that the BTK inhibitors are here to stay, and this was all made possible because of the discovery of the MYD88 mutation and the fact that it can actually uh, turn on Bruton's tyrosine kinase, a very important kinase in the growth and survival of Waldenstrom's. What we're also now seeing, which is also ex exciting, is seeing CXCR4, the second most common mutation in Waldenstrom's, being also targeted. Um, there's a trial which is ongoing looking at ulocuplumab. This is a CXCR4 monoclonal antibody antagonist. We did hear data presented at the International Workshop on Waldenstrom's, um, citing, in fact, some very promising early data looking at responses uh, in patients who were being given uh, ibrutinib and ulocuplumab who had the CXCR4 mutation. In addition, what's also very exciting is the progress being made with venetoclax. Uh, we know that BCL2 is uh, highly expressed in Waldenstrom's, particularly those patients that have the MID88 mutation. Dr. Castillo provided a very nice update at the International Workshop on Waldenstrom's, showing, in fact, high levels of activity for venetoclax as a single agent uh, in relapsed refractory patients. So with all this, there's a lot going on and really a lot of excitement in terms of new options uh, for the treatment of this disease.